Welcome to Zen Healthcare IT. In this Mirth Connect basic series, Brian will walk you through some basic tools and functionality within Mirth Connect. If you have any questions or would like additional resources, head on over to consultzen.com. Hey guys, Brian from Zen here. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most important things you can do after downloading Mirth Connect, replacing the internal database. Before we get to the how, let's talk a little about the why. When you first install Mirth Connect, it comes preloaded with a Derby database. Derby comes from the Apache project, the same folks who came up with the Apache web server, Tomcat, OpenOffice, Maven, and lots of other great open source tools. The reason for choosing Derby as the default database for Mirth Connect is simple. It's incredibly lightweight and is easily embedded in a Java application. Once you download Mirth Connect, the database is already set up and ready to go. Fantastic for getting started and testing the product right away. However, Derby is not designed for large-scale volume. It'll struggle mightily if you try and put it into a production environment. If you're maybe doing a very small project that'll have very little throughput, you can get away with it, but for most production environments, you'd want to move on to a more robust database platform. This is also true if you're just testing Mirth Connect for the first time. If you try and stress test its capabilities while using the integrated Derby database, you will be severely disappointed by the performance. So which database should you use? Mirth Connect natively supports all the major SQL databases, Oracle, MySQL, SQL Server, etc. It can also support any SQL database you can provide the proper driver for. So the choice is up to you. What are you familiar with? What do you maybe have a license for? Our personal pick here at Zen is Postgres. It is an enterprise-grade database that is completely open source. We've used it in many very large-scale deployments and have never had performance issues. For the purposes of today's demonstration, that is what we'll be using. However, if you choose to use any of the other databases available, the steps you see here in this video will be largely the same. The tools we're going to be using today for this demonstration are Mirth Connect version 3.4.2, Postgres, and PG Admin. For the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to assume you have already installed Mirth Connect and Postgres using their default configurations. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Mirth Connect administrator. We're starting off with the default installation, so we have the Derby database installed, as you see here. Our first step is to create a new database using pgadmin. To do that, we're going to click under Servers, Databases, then go up to Object, Create, Database. Under the database name, we're going to use the Mirth default of MirthDB, and we'll leave the owner under your standard user, and click Save. Now we need to launch the Mirth Connect Server Manager. If you're not using Windows, the Server Manager may not be available depending on the version of Mirth Connect you are running. If it's not, you can make the same changes in the mirth.properties file. When you've launched the manager, you're going to click on the Databases tab. Here you will see the default settings for Derby. Now, if under Type, we're going to go ahead and select uh, the type of database we're using, which is Postgres. And you'll notice that it then auto-populates the URL string for you. If you've changed anything from the default settings, such as not hosting it on localhost or using a different port, you'd make those changes here. Similarly, you'll see the name MirthDB, our database name at the end. You want to make sure that's accurate as well. Then we just pass it our credentials and click Apply. Now you head over to the Services tab, and it's time to restart the Mirth Connect service. Once the Mirth service has been restarted, we can now relaunch the Mirth Connect administrator. Note, when you do launch the administrator after switching to a new database, essentially everything on the Mirth server will be reset. You would have lost your channels, your user preferences, anything that's normally saved in the database uh, will now essentially be starting from scratch. Uh, so do keep that in mind. Uh, you'd like to do this right when you install the software. So we'll go ahead and log in with our default username and password 
admin admin is usually the default, and go ahead and start Mirth Connect once again. Now you'll notice once Mirth Connect starts, as I mentioned, everything's going to be reset. You're also going to have the initial registration form, uh, as well as any other uh, notifications or tips that you'd normally get when you first launch a server. Um, you'll see those windows will pop up here. We can go ahead and just enter our default information again just to move on for the sake of the demonstration. And now you'll see down in the log, under our database string, we are now connected to a Postgres database. And we are done. You are now ready to start testing Mirth Connect with an enterprise-level database. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. You'll find some helpful links down in the description if you need some additional information. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them down in below, or you can always head over to our website at www.consultzen.com or email us at info at consultzen.com. Hey, thanks for watching our Mirth Connect Basic series. Before we go, we just want to let you know that Zen now offers free 15 minute consultations with our engineers. So click the link in the description below to get your schedule today. Thanks for watching.